And to go more in depth on the situation in Brussels and the threat of ISIS around the world, we want to welcome in Ambassador R. James Woolsey. He is the former Director of Central Intelligence and now the Chairman of the Leadership Council for the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, as well as Chancellor at the Institute of World Politics. Ambassador Woolsey, thank you again for joining us here on Newsmax Now. Good to be with you. The Turkish president announced that they had deported one of the Brussels attacker, attackers rather, and warned Belgium of his militancy just last year. Belgian authorities later released that man because there were no terrorist links found. How does something like that slip through the cracks? This business of trying to keep track of everybody who might go between countries and what their background is, is uh, really a, a thankless job. It's very difficult and uh, it, uh, uh, any slip up and you could end up having something happen like Brussels. So um, uh, it's uh, one of the many, many reasons it would be a good idea to uh, destroy ISIS uh, back where it comes from in uh, Syria and Iraq and not to put all the weight on uh, uh, trying to catch uh, terrorists after they're already where they're going to commit their terrorist acts. Ambassador NBC News is reporting that the attack in Brussels was likely just the beginning of an ISIS terror wave. Do you agree with that? Well, don't know for sure, but uh, uh, it's logical uh, that that would be the case. ISIS cares very much about the morale of those of us here in the West, and they want to destroy our uh, morale. Ambassador, the deadly terror attacks in Brussels occurred just a few days after capturing Salah Abdus Salam, one of the Paris attackers. Donald Trump brought up the issue of enhanced interrogation, saying that we could that we that he rather would go further than waterboarding if the law allowed it does in your opinion enhanced interrogation work and do you think it would have prevented this attack in belgium i think it depends on the type of interrogation i um, i do think that one should not uh, go beyond uh, uh, waterboarding uh, uh, that one can get up uh, into the range of what would reasonably be considered torture but waterboarding itself, um, I think there's a pretty good argument that it is uh, not uh, uh, torture. Uh, first of all, it's used in the training of all our Navy SEALs and Special Forces, and we don't pull out their fingernails, uh, uh, other forms of torture, uh, uh, supposedly. We, uh, 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 but we do waterboard them. And uh, I've known journalists who volunteered a few years ago to be waterboarded so they could write better stories about waterboarding, and those journalists didn't volunteer to have their fingernails pulled out. So I think that uh, you can make a reasonably good argument that waterboarding is not torture and is a reasonable candidate uh, for use. Ambassador, I have to ask you about another kind of controversial issue coming up. Senator Ted Cruz, as you may have heard, is doubling down today on his call for increased surveillance of some Muslim communities within the United States, citing communities specifically in Michigan and Minnesota today. Are there radicalized Muslim communities within the U.S.? And is this approach something that Americans should do to make us safer, or is it just another form of discrimination, in your opinion? Well, well there are uh, some, but we integrate uh, uh, Country, people from all sorts of different cultures into American society much better uh, than they do in Europe. They tend to have multicultural uh, islands, uh, whereas uh, we in this country, not universally, but generally speaking, uh, welcome people into uh, becoming Americans if they uh, come here from another country and help them figure out what they need to do in order to get their son on the Little League team and, you know, and so on. And uh, uh, we're actually not bad at that, uh, at, but we do have some islands of, uh, of uh, uh, fanaticism uh, and uh, propensity to be involved in terrorism. Now, that doesn't, uh, it's not unique to uh, Islam. Uh, for, I mean, you have only to go watch The Godfather and uh, realize that if one was looking for organized crime uh, back in the 1950s, let's say, uh, one did not uh, turn to the uh, Irish neighborhoods right. in New York. You probably look into it toward uh, Southern Italian. So and you're Sicilian. not condoning actually uh, monitoring these neighborhoods? 
Well, it depends on what you mean by monitoring. I mean, look at what Ray Kelly and I was, Rudy Giuliani, of course, was the mayor that I was trying to think of earlier, uh, mm -hmm. uh, together uh, uh, with later Bloomberg, that uh, were engaged in very uh, aggressive uh, 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 policing mm -hmm. of uh, neighborhoods. Uh, I guess some, some, some of them certainly were principally Muslim. Uh, and uh, they did a very effective job in stopping uh, terrorist attacks in uh, New York. Now, monitoring doesn't mean you, you keep the name, rank, and serial number right. of everybody who crosses the street. Uh, but uh, if someone wants to know how to effectively and legally and constitutionally monitor a neighborhood, uh, that might give rise to terrorism and do it effectively. Go back. They should go back and look at what uh, uh, Giuliani and uh, uh, and Bloomberg uh, uh, and Ray Kelly uh, uh, structured after 9/11. Uh, uh, Fair enough, Ambassador R. James Woolsey. Thank you so much for joining us.